can understand. For this we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. Let's sit down with a smile. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for coming to our service this morning. We are glad you chose to be with us. Without you, this service would not be the way it is. But because you are there, we are glad uh, that you came. The question that we have been trying to develop is, um, what does God want from me? Or you can say, what, does, what do I have that God wants? Because God, there is something that God wants. About four Sundays ago, we started by asking our, uh, answering ourselves that there is something that God wants from me, and that is myself. And I have to be living, not dead. So that even when I'm giving myself as an altar, I know that it is when I conquer and I defeat the flesh, then my sacrifice will be acceptable unto the Lord. That I have to be living a person that is tempted, a person that can see beauty and follow it, a person that can see money and admire it, a person who is alive, a person who knows a good plot, a person who knows a good house. But then I become living. I allow my, myself to say no to that and yet alive for those things. I can pursue them, but I pursue God. Last Sunday we said God wants something else from me. God desires my possession, the things that he has given me. And you know we have a challenge. We don't want to give because we behave like that child with the chips. And I gave you that illustration with the child with the chips. It is yours. But you know God is the one who released it to you. And God has more where it has come from. In actual fact, when the dream of building the cathedral came in 2012 and the cost was over 2 mil, 200 million and I looked at ourselves and I looked at our giving I almost aborted it. But I tell you, we went to dinner somewhere and a few of us just decided to go crazy for God and we raised 3 million. Then we met again, they raised over 10 million. Then I knew this thing is doable and then I said, I will not abort this dream, I will pursue it. And you know what? I'm getting surprises. Because where God gives, he still has more. So even when I give him, I give him because I know he has more where he has, it has come from. He is, you know, two, 250 million for that plot simply means God has more. God has more. Tell your neighbor God has more. And when he gives me, he doesn't consult anybody. He just gives me. And when I need more, I ask him and he still gives me more. Bless the name of the Lord. My life will never be the same again. I tell you, even seeing the, the money pass. You know, the first uh, challenge was the 400 and 448 million when I saw it and I told you it touched and bounced went to the owner but for sure my life and those people that know me from then my life changed I talk differently I actually have a lot of confusion nowadays even when I'm talking about thousands I call them millions and my wife has to remind me it is not 1.5 it's 1,500 but I say anyway, you understand where I'm coming from. Not because I have it, but because it has changed my thinking. Now my thinking is different and I pray that God can change our thinking also. Because where God has given you what he gave you, he still has more. The millionaires that are looking at me actually, they, they are still confessing that they are not millionaires. But look at what God has given you. Look at the plot where you live. Look at the house. Look at the car. Kwani millionaire ni nani? Siniwewe. So I'm talking to millionaires, but many times when a person comes to preach to us and talking about millionaires, you throw your hand to somebody else. I'm saying, no, 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 I am. I count myself a millionaire. Some of you who millionaire gani? Umeshomesha mtoto parallel. Umemulipia pari pa kulala na iyo mia sita, mia saba ukalipa fees. Millionaire ni nani? Ni mimi. Ni, ni kwamba tu millionaire yangu haiku, haiku japamoja at the same time. So, so you, you have to change your thinking so that when you know that God has blessed you, you start thinking about God and his blessing. I want to say that many times we wonder, what is God looking from me? What do I have? And sometimes we get confused. But point number three, and this is the, 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 the part three of what I've been sharing, and I'll finish it to, today. And there could be other things that the Lord wants to give us. But in this year of uncommon harvest, for me, those threes are crucial. I present myself, 
as a living sacrifice. Two, I give my possession to the Lord. And three, I praise him. Bless the name of the Lord. And I have a question for you in this statement. A tradition. Is this a statement, a tradition, or a command? And the statement is, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because many times when we hear praise the Lord, how do we respond? Amen. And we respond amen, but we don't do what the praise the Lord was intended for. I know some of us don't know where it came from. But originally when people met together and they told each other praise the Lord, they simply meant, now tell me. It was opening yourself for the other person to tell you or praise God as you hear. And when they finished, then it was your turn also to praise the Lord. But I know today when we say praise the Lord, you say amen. We go right through to the things that we are saying. How is your family? How is my family? And we finish quickly. Please, can I get 500 from you? It is quick, 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 quick. Yet we need to praise the Lord. Is it a command or is it a cliche? A lot of us is a cliche. We just say amen for it. Does it really mean what it says? Praise the Lord. Now, I'm trying not to trick you, but I'm, I just want you to hear me. Praise the Lord. Those three words. Praise the Lord. That phrase, although it has, been, it has been put in the church vocabulary, it means a little more than what we try to do. Let's try a little exper experiment. And I promise this will not hurt any one of us. When I say praise the Lord, I want you to stand up and praise the Lord. I don't want you to tell me amen. I want you to stand up and praise the Lord. Amen. Is there anybody who has something to praise God? Then praise the Lord. You, you, you. I caught you. I caught you. I caught you. You know how I caught you? I told you to not hurt. I told you praise the Lord. You said amen and you clapped your hands. I want you to praise the Lord. You say something. God has done so much. Praise the Lord. Open your mouth and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I told you, I'm praying that this service will be a little bit confused. It will not be the usual one. You praise the Lord. And some of you have nothing to praise the Lord. You are even looking at me right now. Why? You have nothing. And God wants me to praise the Lord. You may get seated. Praise the Lord. In the book of Psalms 100, verse 1 to, to the end, it says this. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with the singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth in all generation. As I said earlier, four weeks ago, I started this, and we are going to continue. As a matter of fact, I have always been taught that there are three levels or three stages that lead us into the presence of the Lord. Number one is thanksgiving. Number two is praise. And number three is worship. In thanksgiving, we, it is an attitude of thankfulness for what God has done. Amen? So when I'm thanking God, I have an attitude of what God has done and I thank him. Praise is acknowledging what God is. Now I want you to hear this. An attitude of thankfulness for what God has done. Praise is acknowledging what God is. Because there is nothing we can do to make God God. God is. Bless the name of the Lord. And finally, worship. Worship, this is a personal interaction with the presence of the Lord. When you and God... Close yourself, if there could be a multitude of people, but you close yourself in a closet, you and God. You're having a fellowship with, with him. And I want us to look at this three and maybe see if we can discover the breakthrough in our worship. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. He requires thanksgiving. I don't know whether you have left to go somewhere 
and about halfway there you realize you are going the wrong direction. Especially men, because men, before we call to say we are lost, we have to really get lost. I know you are getting what I'm saying. You have to really get lost. So one time, Alice and I and our daughter, we are going to visit our son-in-law and my daughter, and they had moved. So I had not gone there before myself, and uh, we were getting instructions and so on. And um, we got really lost. How we discovered we are getting lost is because we are getting back to the city. And then we discovered we are really getting lost, so we stopped. Siokimao um, train station. Because I say it's Asa to Mepotea. And then why did we not ask the instruction earlier? It's because I'm a man. And we always prove to our spouses we know it. No wonder if you have a spouse, when you are being carried, you don't even notice the path that you passed. So next time you, you get the car, you don't know the direction because you are carried. You know, I've heard that. Ukibebwa, hata kurara unaweza lala, usome gazeti, usome kitabu. Sasa wakati utachukua gari kwenda kule kathiri, unashindwa. Tulipitia wapi? Apana, hatu kupita hapa. Even some of us spouses, we get to some argument. Hatu kupita hapa. Mimi najua, hatu kupita hapa. Nae buwana nasema, mimi najua tulipita hapa. Conversation ni kifika pale na kuwaga kari, afadhali moja wenu wa nyamaze, tuone kama itafika pale. Anyway, many times inafikaga tu kwa grace ya mungu. Lakini kuna kuwaga hite debate. Kwa za moja likuwa melala, mulipo pita pali pale. Hakuona. Lakini saa hii anakumbuka already. Hatu kupita hapa. Na we ndi unajua. Sasa kwanza lazima upote as a man. Sindiyo, tulisema hivyo. Kwanza upote kabisa. Ukisha pote ndi unasema. Hey, I think you are right. Uh, hatu kupita hapa. So you correct yourself and get to the right direction. So thanksgiving is an attitude. And so you, you are moving and then you discover you are lost. And once you discover you are lost, then you are finding your way back so that you can find your way where, where you want to go. You see, before we can get it right direction towards our worship, we need to get it right where we begin. And the direction we need to start is the direction of thanksgiving. We thank God. What does it mean to be thankful? It simply means when I'm speaking, what I'm speaking of uh, being thankful is pretty simple. The concept that we can explain all of us. What I'm saying for me to be thankful, the word that I can underline is to remember. Because you cannot be thankful if you are forgetful. So look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, remember. In actual fact, your mind has to be alert. Because you cannot be thankful, yet you forget very quickly. Have you ever been to a place and somebody is saying, you remember, you remember the day we got married? And somebody is asking, remember the day we got married, that one day, that one year, sorry, not days, that one year, remember. Kwani kulitendeka nini? You can't remember. For sure, we remember a few bits and bits and bits and bits and bits, but not everything. But for you to be grateful for your wedding day, you have to get all the details. I see myself going to Kenyona, and I see myself going to the camp of the forest camp near there. Why? Because the tradition simply meant you cannot go to pick the girl yourself. Others have to do it. But then I remember it so well. The old man said, where is Kemani? The old man. You know the ladies, Naisho, Kedutha, nothing. This man said, where is Kemani? I remember that very well. Because they had come to call me and say, Amesema ukuje. We spend only, I don't know, five, six minutes. Because the old man was Mukari. When he said, Kemani ni okabas. Nani anaomba? He himself was not that religious. Nani anaomba? And then there is a good old man who just passed away the other day, a, a father to Alice who prayed. And then, Twende. So we came. Actually, we had to stop in Ruisambo because we were very early. Time to, to make beat yote. We had given them an hour and a half. So I remember that very well. I also remember very well that my wedding had no rice. Because all my rice 
got burned. And nobody would tell me. So I was just wondering, he reception, why, why is it taking too long? Ninaperekwa hivi, ninaperekwa hivi. Finally, nikauliza mtu, kwani amjenda kuchukua chakula? And somebody says, "Mshere ni ushurile." Then I said, "Fine, why don't you buy this and and you know what? Ask, you know, that's why I tell young people, you don't have to have rice to get married. Me I got married with no rice and I've been married for that one year. Imagine. And there are some of you got married with the bread, bread and soda. And you are still married. That is God. So it is not the cuckoos and so on and everything. It's okay to have them. Kini yangu mchere. Na ilikuwa ikipikwa na watu professional. Ili ungua. Wangino muna uliza inaungua gaje. Uliza wa mama. Watakuambia. Weka mchele vibaya. Utaungua kule chini. Ukifikiria ati unaiva. Ukienda kupakua hivyo nakuta huu ujaiva. Na ula wachini umeungua. Remembering, being thankful means I'm simply remembering those things the Lord has done. Bless the name of the Lord. Being thankful is to remember what God has done. It means that I don't become selfish with the blessings of God, but I celebrate his abundant provision in my life. What has the Lord done for you? Remember, the times that the Lord has blessed you. The times that the Lord has healed you. The times that the Lord has provided for your needs. The times that the Lord has forgiven you from your sins. The times that the Lord has encouraged you. The times that the Lord has given you courage and strength to face the world. When you remember those things, you can be thankful. And every day we come to church, we need to come with thankful hearts because of the victories of the week. Because every day, actually, there are things that the Lord has done. But you know what? We forget. The, the ten lepers that were were, were, were healed by Jesus. You know, somebody has tried to explain, and sometimes I agree with him, because that is, it appears like living sacrifice. Because you and I are living sacrifice. And living sacrifice have decided whether to be thankful to God or thankful to some, somebody else. Because one of them said, one waited to see if the cure was real. He got healed, but he said, Watch ni goja kidogo. Angalau ni juwe kama hii ni akweli. You see, God gives you a miracle and you are still waiting for it to know whether it is real. You know, God blesses you and you wonder, is it real? Nimeoa, be thankful. Oh, I want to see whether we can stay with her 10 years. Which 10 years? If you can appreciate one day, then God will give you the grace for two days. But some of us are still waiting. No wonder we fall into sin, first of all, to see whether this lady living with me can make a good wife. We fall into sin. Because we don't believe that God can give you a choice. His choice. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I can feel this, this, is, this place is becoming a little bit quieter. But it is alright. Maybe the other one said he waited to see whether what has happened would last. So this one was not in a hurry. The one is real, the other one whether it is going to last. I want to see whether it is going to last, you know. And I say again, that one is Gidai. We are not serious. We still wait for 50 to be thankful? Then I don't believe we will ever be thankful. If, we cannot be thank if you cannot be thankful for the year that you have lived with, you know, let me tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Getting married as a man, disorganized as all men are, then somebody tells you not to throw your socks everywhere. Living with that person, even for one day, be thankful. Then children show up. And children are wonderful. They mess themselves. And if you have not changed a diaper, because today is natuwa unatupa. Sisi tulikuwa tunaosha. Zirikuwa napi. Unaosha unanika hapo inje. Na unatoka wajirani wakiona tu unanika hapo inje. Napi. Zanani? Sawatoto wako. Hiyo. You are thankful. So living with the kids one day, you need to be thankful. It is actually the grace of God. I don't want to continue there. The other ones, maybe he said, I'm going to see Jesus later. But for now, I'm healed. Let me continue with my business. Just like all of us, when the Lord blesses us, we want to see him later, see whether we can multiply and multiply and multiply the resources that God has given us. One decided that he had never had leprosy. You know, there are some of us actually don't believe we need the Savior. We normally think, oh, me, I was not very sinner. I was just sinner, but not very sinner. Others were sinner, but me, I wasn't. So I will see Jesus later. 
And that could have caused them not to be grateful. Another one maybe would have said, anyway, if I stayed like this for long, I would have gotten well. You know, I would have gotten well. And then I would be okay. So he can't thank God. You know, and it is like you and me who say, Mimi, ningeka sana hata hiyo plot ningeanunua. Mungu amekupatia lakini unasema, ah, Mungu. Hata ningeka sana, hii ningeanunua. Savings. Hii ningeipamba, hii ningeichukua hii ingekuwa yangu. Another one said, anyway, one gave the glory to the priest. He said, he had said we go show ourselves to the priest. May I go to the priest and tell them I'm well. So sometimes you go to the priests to tell them that we are well, we forget the Lord. One said, oh well, Jesus didn't, didn't really do anything. Wait, so do you want to Alifanya kitu? Hapana. Alisema tu. Alisema tuende tukajionye. Ya, kwa hivyo ni imani yetu ya kweda kujionyesha. Dio imetuponya sisi. Araf turudi kwa haka tutamwenda kumambia nini. So that one could not be grateful at all. And some of us fall into the same thing. One said, oh well, any rabbi could have done it. Any pastor could do it. So we miss it. Because not any pastor. And then one had said, I am just almost improving. But one decided. I will go back and tell the Lord, thank you for healing me. Amen. It's good for us to be thankful. Even in a church like this, when we come, we are thankful to the Lord. Because the question is, what happens for our unthankful people? And I will tell you, you know, when I started this series, I knew I'm going to step to a lot of people. And I will still step on you again. Unthankful people, what does the Bible say about them? Romans chapter 1 verse 21 to 32. This is what it says. Because although they knew God, they did not thank him or glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. 22. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also, listen to this, gave them up to what? Uncleanness, lust of their hearts, dishonor of their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for lies. They worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason God gave them up to what? To veil passion. For even their women exchange their natural use of what is against his nature. 27. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of their women binding their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to the best mind. To do those things which are not fitting. 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, in, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Undiscerning and, and, and trustworthy and loving and forgiving and merciful. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God. That those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, do the same. But also approve those who practice them. Yani siyo kufanya tu. Lakini hata wale wanatenda wa mambo. Anawaunga mkono na kuwa support. You know some of us find ourselves in groups. That whatever they do. Whether you say you don't. You are approving the things they do. There is somebody who has written what he calls the four sums of faith. This is a man called Ray St Stidman. He's a Baptist. He tells of an experience of someone called Ironside. He had a crowd, he had a crowded restaurant. But just as Ironside was about to begin his meal, 
a man approached and asked if he could join him. Just the way you can go to a restaurant. So I own, she has gone to a restaurant. It's crowded. And somebody is looking for a seat. And there is only one seat where this man is. So he, he in, inside, uh, 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 inside him, he said, Ah, well, Karibu. So he invited him to have seat. Then, as was his custom, Ironside bowed his head in prayer, thanking God for the meal. When he opened his eyes, he discovered the other man was gazing at him. So, the other man gazing at him is asking him, because a lot of us when we pray, how do we do it? In a restaurant. Either. So, the guy asks, are you having a headache? Do you have a headache? And the iron side said, no, I don't. The other man asked, well, is there something wrong with your food? He said, no. I was simply thanking God as I always do before I eat. Oh, the man said, oh, you are one of those, eh? Well, I want you to know I never give thanks myself. I earn my money by the sweat of my brow and I don't have to give thanks to anyone or anybody when I eat. I just start it right away. And then I on side said, ah, Yes, you are just like my dog. Because when I give my dog, it just eats. When we choose not to give thanks unto the Lord, when we choose not to give all our thanks unto the Lord, we see what that unthankfulness in our lives, a lack of unthankfulness in our lives can, be, can bring. It brings a bigger problem in our life because most sin, and I say again, most sin, can be traced back to unthankfulness. Unthankful child to the parents, unthankful husband to the wife, or unthankful husband, uh, wife to the husband, unthankful uh, parents to the children, unthankful, just unthankful. A person who is unthankful. And Paul then says, because of being unthankful, they became futile in their thoughts. If we become unthankful, our thoughts will be futile. Their hearts were darkened because of being unthankful. They changed the glory of God into the image of men, birds, beasts, and creeping things. Why? They refused to thank God who owns all cattle on a thousand hills. They became controlled by lust and dishonor. They dishonored their bodies, piercing the body, homosexuality, perverted sexual ways. They exchanged the truth with a lie, became filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, evil, murder, strife, deceit, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors, of evil things, disobedient to parents, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, they become worthy of death, Paul records. So if you are struggling today, struggling to be thankful to the Lord, look whether you are thankful. I say again, if you are struggling to praise God for the things he has given you, look whether you have a problem with being thankful in one area or another. All of this become they refused to be thankful for what the Lord had done in their lives. The Bible tells us that one of the signs of the return of Jesus Christ is people will be unthankful. They will be so unthankful. So that means the Lord is coming because people are not thankful at all. Unthankful at all. Hallelujah. Maybe I've touched your heart by saying all that. And I told you the service should be Isue na mpango sana. Unaweza simama tu mwambie bwana asante. 
Usikoje wengine wasimame. Wewe unasimama peke yako unasema thank you and then you sit down. Wow! Let everybody be surprised why you are thanking God for that bread. Can you imagine bread? Bread in the morning. Because there are people actually who had no bread in the morning. You thank God that today you woke up with your wife and you prayed. Because there are people who woke up with their wives and they haven't prayed at all. Even greeting one another. You know, so I greeted Alice at five. I've greeted her again about four times until she's saying, eh, na leo salimia. And I will. If I sat there, we'll keep on greeting one another. Kwa sababu mukisema tuangaliane, tunaangaliana na ye. Yeah. Kwa hivyo kama hautaki salamu, akae pembe ile na mimi kae pembe ile tuwe tukifanyana hiyo ya juu but as long as we are together we we'll keep on greeting one being thankful amen thankful full of thanks for the things that the lord has done even as a church we can be thankful five acres for nothing we need to be thankful ah unajua wako heyoti kuingia na kuadwa nyu it doesn't happen so if the Lord does it, we need to be thankful. Oh my goodness. You know, every time I go to fill my car and I say Jaza, I am so thankful because I know there are times that hallelujah. To eke free Alice, he aina booster. Iteremuke kutoka pale pale panaitu magumu. Baka naivasha 25 kilometers bila kunywa maji ya mama futa. You think we were doing it because we liked it? Mvuko bwana. So every time I get jaza, I go back and I say, oh, yes. And some of you ought actually to be thankful every time you, you enter into your own house. You, you, at, nani anafungua hii nyumba? Ni ya nani? Hii ni ya nani? Wow. Because it should remind some of you Zimmerman, a place where you had a you had a dining table but you never used it because man you are squeezed in there oh hallelujah I know I know maybe you you being thankful let me move very quickly to praise I know we don't have a lot of time we thank God thankfulness and this is what God requires of us in this uncommon year uncommon Year of, uh, an, year of uncommon harvest. He wants me to be thankful. But unthankf thankfulness leads us into praise. That is the one that pushes us. Because when you say thank you to someone, you can praise them. Try it. You that are married, try to be thankful for anything to your spouse. spouse. A pike chai, nai, hai kuonja kama ile ya mama, Lakini umuambia asanti. Hey, sweetie, that tea, that was fantastic. If you do it often, you will praise her. If you appreciate her first, you will praise her. Wacha hii ya nini, kuna ingine tunasemaga hiyo ni ya, ni ya kuonyesha watu wakiigia. Unajua kuna pari ukiigia, unasikia ruga hiyo mpaka unaona ni fake. There is a place we used to go and visit some couple. They were members of our church, but we would tell it was Faku. And I'll tell you the reason. They had hated one of their child who had come with that wife. Hated her, that child. And we knew the child was beaten really well. But every time we entered in, honey, honey this, honey that, honey this, honey that, honey. And then in your heart you say, fake. So when we are leaving, I say, Alice, honey that, honey this, honey that, honey this. You know, when you appreciate your spouse, even you that are here and your spouse is not here, if you learn to appreciate, you will praise them. If we learn to appreciate God, we will praise him. It will be so easy. If we thank him, then you discover, come amenifanyia ivyo. Hakuna mungu kama yeye. Siapokea sifa. You, it will be very easy for you to do it. But some of us have a problem with the people that live with us. Then how will it be a God that we have not seen if we cannot appreciate the lady, the woman, the child, the mother, the father that we see? You see how difficult it would be? But if we learn to appreciate and thankful to one another. 
Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. And then it ends by saying, and bless his name. Praise actually is the expression of thanks. It is putting some action to our thankfulness. When we praise the Lord, we do more than just remember or recall what he has done to us. Actually, you remember I told you we are thankful for the sins he has forgiven us. We are thankful. Oh, you are a great God. But when we come to praise him, we don't go back and say, Ni kwa sababu alinipatia. Apana. Tukija kumsifu, tunasema, you are all in all for me. You are my all in all. We are saying you are my king. You know, we thanked him there. But now we are saying you are my king. We are praising him as a king. He healed us. Now we are praising him as our healer. The praise changes. You are my healer. Bless the name of the Lord. You are my Lord. You are my God. My ever-present help in times of trouble. You are my everything. You are my hope. We praise him because he is my hope. He is everything. So when we are time to praise the Lord, don't just say amen. Praise him. Say something that he has done. He's my king. He's my everything. Oh my goodness. Labda ni nawarudisha nyuma kidogo. Lakini pale neno praise the Lord lilianza. Ilikuwa inatubo sisi. Your father munaenda nae anakutana mzee mwingine. Wanabia na mwadha ni agoshwa. Agosho wa Jesu sasa wanaanza kumogosha Jesu wanamogosha 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 dakika kama thate wewe uko hapo tu na unajua wazazi wa siku ile sio <laughs> wa siku hizi watoto wanamwambia da mam twende huyu naye amekuja kutuzuzie nini ni story gani anakupatia kwanza wengine hawashiki hiyo randa hiyo kikuyu yenu mnaongea hawashiki wakishamaliza hivyo tu wanaulizana eh because those are Christians. How are your people? And you know, they start with every one of them. And they are not in a hurry. How is Kemani? The story of Kemani, Hagedia Gesoma, Kehikania, you know. How is the Joki? Joki is my sister. Then another story of Joki and so on. We are still there. A whole hour, we haven't moved. Then our generation came. We were in a hurry. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we just go. Amen. Let it be so. In other words, we are, we are trying to say, wewe unamusifu, enderea kumsifu. Amen. Enderea kumsifu. Remember I told you, we are living what? Sacrifices. And I am a living sacrifice. I am talking about myself. Ushirika. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then you want to move very, very quickly. But if we had to praise the Lord, actually, let's have time. I would rather you tell someone, let's not praise him now because I don't have time. And you'll be honest. Because praising God with eyes telling me how your week was. Not just amen, and Amen. is our. Like any, praise the Lord. Why? Because he is my king. What did he do to become a king? He protected me. Wow! We praise God. Hey, man, he's my healer. What did he do? He healed me or healed my child. We are praising God. God. Remember thankfulness, we are declaring what he has done. We remember. Kamogate, Gatosti, you know he gave me he gave me this, a new dress. We are thankful. But when we come to praise, we take what he has done and we allocate a name to it. If he is, he is my provider, he provided for me, when I come to, to praise him, I say, you are my Jehovah Jire. Wow. Hi. Nafikiria hii kihujo igependa ibada ambayo ni kubwa kidogo kuliko. Can I ask a few people to come and read some scriptures for us? Just read them. Hmm? I want to call a few people to come and read some scriptures for us. Catherine, Sam, and there was somebody else. Oh, there you are, Rachel. Just come and read. You see, they, as we praise God, there, there, there are ways we can do it. We can praise God with our voice. And I think, Catherine, you have the voice. Eh? 
Maybe you can read for us Psalms 35, 28, Psalm 43, Psalm 89, verse 1. Kama itafanya kazi. Hata imekuja huko. Okay, Psalms. Imekuja. <coughs> Psalms 35 verse 28 It says My tongue will speak of your righteousness And of your praises all day long Psalms 40 verse 3 Psalms 40 verse 3 He put a new song in my mouth A hymn of praise to our God Amen Psalms 89 verse 1 Psalms 89 verse 1 I will sing of the Lord's great love forever with my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations We praise God with our voice So you cannot praise God by closing your mouth you praise God by opening your mouth Amen, Amen. Let's uh, ask uh, is it Rachel or uh, Psalms 33 2 Psalms 33 2 Praise the Lord with the harp and make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Psalms 47 verse 1. Uh, clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. Amen. Psalms 150 verse 3 and 5. Praise him with the sounding. Sorry. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of the cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Praise the name of the Lord. We can praise him with the instruments, isn't it? We can praise him with music and instruments, just making him be praised. Now, Psalm 63 verse 4. Psalm 63 verse 4. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. Amen. Acts 3 verse 8. Acts 3 and uh, verse 8, he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Amen. And the last one. Psalms 149, verse 3. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. The final one is we praise him with action. Amen. But I know some of us si mama ima rajilinde neno lake bwa. But we need to Amen. Dance and praise the Lord and appreciate him and you know and all that. You know what I want us to do in this church? I want all of us to stand and we praise God. But I, but I know some of you have a challenge. But I want some of you to stand and just clap your hands to the Lord. Wait, hold on, hold on. Don't just do it now. Some of you, I want you to just stand and, and declare with your mouth, what a mighty God we serve. You know, as we praise him, I want a few people of you just to stand and pray. Lift up your hands up here and just clap to the Lord. I want some other people to stand up and dance before the Lord. Let's make some crazy noise in the house of the Lord. Can I hear some people do one of those things that we say, what a mighty God we serve. 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 Yes. Yeah. Whoa. Hallelujah. You, you may get seated. It feels a little bit awkward. Remember the story I told you of this man called Ironside? He said the only thing in his life does not give thanks is a dog in his house. But anybody else, anything else that has life gives thanks. Woo. And then finally, 
worship. And you know, I, I know, and yet I have to say this, because now this is where the rubber touches the road. Worship in many, many, many ways simply means anything that makes God smile. Anything that makes God smile. That's worship. If you can, you know, there's a Kikuyu song that says, Jesu adekia hanini. Oh, my goodness. When Jesus smiles to me, all my sorrow, my pain, they fall off like tattered clothes. In other words, smile at me, Lord. Isn't it? Lord, smile at me. Nichekeshi. Chekeshwa na maisha yangu. Datuna po muabudu buwana. Hapo ndipo anachekeshwa na maisha yetu. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. In the Old Testament, this is uh, something that I thought I would try to explain a little bit. In the Old Testament, there was a piece of furniture called the altar of incense. And Mwede is dealing with the altar, so come and hear after the ladies week. So looking back today at this old furniture, we see that it was a picture of worship and prayer. The altar of incense is a place of worship and prayer. And a special mixture of spices was allowed to smolder on a bed of coals taken two times a day for the altar. They were taken there two times a day. And a sweet aroma would fill the tabernacle and then drift into the courtyard and into the camp of the Israelites. And the pleasant smile was a comfort to the people that everything was all right in the tabernacle. It smells nice. Now, the people that used to prepare the incense were given a special recipe. Special. They blended together four sweet spices together to make that particular aroma. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And the Lord wants me to have that aroma. And we could say for sure that this mixture, because one, three of them needed to have half of the whole total and the last had the half in other words that is how the mixture was let me let's let's look at exodus 30 exodus 30 verse 34 to 38 i'm sorry today if i cut it here i'll not forgive myself i'll even wonder why i told you about the five acres because they took a lot of my time because above everything else I was called to speak to you, whether in a tent or trees. Easy to zigine ni bashishi. Tunashukuru mungu. It says this, and the Lord said to Moses, take sweet spices, stacked, and oncha, and glabanum, and pure frankincense. With these sweet spices, there shall be equal amounts of each. So the first three of those were put together. You can read the whole of it up to 38, but because of time, those are the things that I wanted to, 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 to look at. The first half of this incense can be compared to our efforts towards God in worship, while the other half of the incense is to represent God's part. Each of the first three spices has special meaning and tells us about worship. And those are the meaning that I thought I'll bring to you. Stakte was aromatic gum of resin that flowed freely from a desert tree. The substance would ooze forth from the tree without any coaxion or a pumping. It just flowed freely. Amen. And it was meant to be given freely. Worship is supposed to be given freely from our heart without hebu tu imbe wimbo ya kuwa budu. Tuna kuwa. You see, you, because of the hardness of your heart, 
That's why we sing those songs to you. But worship, hakuna handro, nikuja na kumuabudu buwana. And it should come from my heart freely. Freely. It was meant to be given freely from a heart of love to the king of kings. No one can force us to worship. Real worship is a voluntary part of each one of us. And then Oncha was taken from a grinding, the shell of a sea creature that lived very deep in the lakes of India. What is, it was ground into this powder and then burnt. It would send out a musky odor. Our worship is to come from a deep place within us. Deep place within us. When our worship from the spirit, when we worship from the spirit, we go beyond emotion and intellect and enter into a deep communication with God. So worship is the coming together of God's spirit and the human spirit in the highest act of mutual love. And that's why the psalmist declare, deep calls unto the deep. In other words, the spirit of God calls into our spirit. So when we worship, we are going into a deeper, deeper, deeper a worship with the Lord. Kalabanam was a reason taken from a plant of parsley family by itself. Kalabanam has a very unpleasant odor. Order. Very unpleasant. Very unpleasant. And I like imagining it's the way I am. I am very unpleasant. If I am burned alone, Oh, what will come out of me will be very unpleasant. But God is good. I have to be mixed with this something. Unpleasant order. But when mixed correctly with the other spices, it contributed to the potency and exhilarating effect of aroma of incense. So worship likewise is an intense experience, powerful and exhilarating. It is impossible to worship passively. Worship is an act of the entire person, spirit, soul, and body. You can't just ideally worship the Lord. It must be done with all the intensity we can come up with. Remember, wewe peke yako, unanuka. Unataka kuchanganywa ili upendeze. So in our part of worship, we give it freely from the spirit and with intensity. And now, the last one comes God's part, which is the second half of the incense. And this is a frankincense. This came from a, 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 a shrub or scrubby tree in the Middle East. Scrubbing the back of the tree caused the gum to ooze forth from the limbs. After it dried, it was collected by gatherers and crushed. When crushed, it turned white and color of purity. It was also very expensive. The wise men, the wise men in the Bible, valued it so highly that when they offered gifts to Christ, child in Bethlehem, one of the gifts was frankincense. So to us, the Lord is like a precious commodity. He is the pearl of great price. He is the treasure hidden in the field. As we magnify his great worth, he, he responds by meeting with us at the altar. Bless the name of the Lord. Worship. He requires my worship. He requires my thankfulness. He requires my praise. In this great year of uncommon harvest, may the Lord give you an uncommon way of being thankful to the Lord. May the Lord give you an uncommon way to praise the Lord. May the Lord give to you an uncommon way to worship him. Because what can we give him? We can give him our worship. We can give him. And, and, and I say again, if you thank him, you will praise him. If you praise him, you will worship him. It's as easy as that. So if you are not thankful to him and you come to this church, the other thing is also true. That's why you have a problem to praise him. And if you don't praise him, that's why you have a problem to worship him. And you know, sometimes when leaders are leading us here, they look at us. Let's thank the Lord and somebody just 
doesn't have nothing. No clue. Is that encouraging the guys that are here? Let's thank the Lord and you have no clue. Now, I tell you, if you become so unthankful, remember what Paul tells us in the book of Romans chapter 1. Learn to be thankful. Has God done anything to us? Yes, he has. Has he done it today? Yes, he has. Can we be thankful? Yes, we could. By just declaring what areas are we thankful in our lives. Are we intimidated? Yes, so much. By who? By people seated next to us. Do we know them? Yes, by name. Anything else? No idea. They intimidate us? Yes. We allow them? Yes. Why do you allow them to intimidate, to intimidate you and you have something you can thank God for? Now I said this. In this church a few years ago, sometimes you hear somebody amesema amekula elfu miatano. Elfu miatano. Anasema, hiyo pesa, nitasomesha mtoto, nitanunua shamba, na nitajenga. Na wengine hapa mnasema hakuna shamba kama hiyo. Sasa shida yako ni hile darasa huko. Kuna mashamba na nyumba sampuli sote. Hati hamekula milion, milion atanunua proti wapi. Hata nunua huko unanunua ka proti. Lakini atanunua proti, atajenga na atasomesha mtoto wake. So kama ni wewe dugu na huko pale. Na bwana amekubariki Ruai, Mweki, Santon, Zimaman, you know, na umekaa na jamaa anatoka sijui wapi, alafu ana You know you need to get to a place and say me I will not be intimidated by anybody. Picking the words of the Nigerian brother who was here, he said there is no traffic jam until your car joins there. So in other words, wewe unaendelea kuomba ga Hapa kanisa hatuna shida ya parking. Mpaka yako hiyo ni moja hizi shida. So there is no, you, you should not, don't sympathize with Bishop Jimmy. No, buy it. If the Lord gives it to you, buy it. And if you, and some of you, wacha kutu surprise. Because when you surprise us on the road, unapiga honi, atujuni nani ametupigia honi. Kuja nayo hapa tuione. Sawa. Hakuna parking. Nani amekwambia hakuna kuja nayo. Parking yako, iko. I know some of you are saying, yangu ni mepaki huko inje, eh, siyata yu ni paki. Na tumeweka security hako. You know sometimes you preach and you don't know how to finish. God wants my thankfulness. God wants what? My thankfulness. God wants my praise. God wants my worship. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say it's the day that the Lord has made. great thanks to us even to you and maybe we can tell him thank you shall we father i thank you i thank you for your great things that you have done ministered provision to me and my family lord catered for us and watched over us and lord god therefore we declare that you are the king of kings and the lord of lords you are jehovah rapha to us you are jehovah nisi and we worship you we worship you we worship you Maybe you are in this sanctuary this morning and you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you'd like to do so this morning. You are saying, yes, I want to give my life to Jesus. If you lift up your hand, we'll pray for you today. Remember, he wants you. You give yourself a living sacrifice. He wants you to offer to him you are everything, your possession. He wants you to give him thanksgiving and praise and worship. Would you like to give him your life also? If you lift up your hand, I'll spot you quickly. I will pray for you as we come to finish the service.
Don't allow anybody to intimidate you. Maybe they were praying in tongues when, when you don't know how to pray in tongues and you're not even a believer. But you are saying, no, today I want to give my life to Jesus. Should it up? We'll pray for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise as we allow the Lord